Hey there, welcome to Hard Rooster Labs. Today I'll be showing you how to take your fantastic artwork and export it from Blender, import it into Unreal, set up your mod, cook, and test it. So let's get started. I have two things I need to export, the grill and the UV mesh. So I'll do one at a time. I'll select the grill, right click in the 3D viewport, and that will bring up the file context menu. Then I'll select export FBX. This will bring up the export window. First, I'll select where I want to put it. I've got a folder somewhere on my desktop I want to put it in, so I'll find that. Then I'll click on this icon here to create a new folder, a handy little feature Blender lets you do now so you don't have to make folders in Windows File Explorer. I'll name my new folder, open it up, and now I'll name my grill. I'll make sure I put the word conforming at the end. It makes sense to keep a relatively standard naming convention so your files will be grouped together in the editor. Now over on the right side of the window, I need to tick the selected objects box. If you don't do this, Blender will export every object in your Blend file rather than just the objects you have selected. Now I'll expand the geometry window, and I'll make sure I select faces from the smoothing drop down menu, and I'll tick the tangent spaces box. Now, out of habit, I'll expand the armature window and untick the add leaf bones. You don't have to do this unless you're exporting an armature, but it's good practice to get into the habit of doing. Now I can export my grill. I will now repeat these steps for the UV mesh. F4, export, FBX. I'll just modify the name by replacing the word conforming with UV mesh, and I can just press export. If you're exporting a wheel, the steps are the same. If you're exporting a headlight or something with a rigged or skinned mesh, then follow along here. First, assuming I've already exported the UV mesh and the conforming mesh, I'll now export the skeletal mesh. I'll do this by selecting the armature, then box selecting the rigged mesh, then I export it like I would any other fixture, following the steps we previously established. Let's launch the Unreal Editor now. We are going to be using 4.24.3, which as of the making of this video only exists on the open beta branch of Automation, but it will be public soon. If you need some help about where to get it, I'll link another video in the info tab and in the video description. Don't be surprised if the editor or the automation project hang for some time around 45 or 98%. That's pretty normal. The slower your computer, and the fewer processor cores you have, the longer the compiling shaders and generating mesh fields might take. If the automation project isn't automatically found, you may need to browse through Windows Explorer to find it and let the launcher know where it's at so it can point to it in the future. My project is right here. If your project doesn't appear, click on More, then click Browse and point to the launcher at the location where you move the automation project to. Don't point it to the default SDK location. Put it in a folder on the root level in a drive on your PC. You may be waiting for shaders to compile for some time. Once the editor is open, you may need to expand the sources panel and make sure show plugin content is selected from the view options. Let's start a new mod. At the top of the screen, I'll click on the create mod button. If you've modded before, you might wonder where all the templates are. Well, dear child, they're gone. And they're never coming back. But it's okay. I'm going to show you how to set up some fixture mods and a rim mod. So fill out the mod name field, the author field, and the type field. And let's go. Our new mod is nothing more than an empty folder at this point. So I need to right click inside the folder, find CAMSO, and I'll find the fixture preview data asset. Now name your asset. Now I'll navigate over to the import button and I'll import my grill bits. I have a conforming mesh and a UV mesh. I can import them both at the same time, so that's what I'll do. 
In the import dialog, I'm going to make sure combined meshes is ticked. That way, if you have any fixtures that are multiple objects in one FBX container, they'll stay in the FBX container. I'll also make sure import normals and tangents is selected here. Under the materials selection, I'll choose all assets from the search location dropdown and do not create materials from the material import method dropdown. Now I will import my asset. With both assets selected, I'm going to right click on them and make sure I select set meshes to allow CPU access. If you end up with invisible fixtures, you may have forgotten this step. Now I'll double click on the grill and assign my default materials. This is the area where you'll assign grill materials. Panel 1, Panel 2, and Grill 1 are materials that we imported from Blender. For the grill, I can search for M underscore grill for the grill material. For the rest of it, you could choose chrome or plastic or paint or any number of materials. You can check out the list of available materials from the Automation Wiki. I'll just set my materials to paint. Now I'll double click my preview data file and it looks a lot like our old blueprints. I'll drag the conforming mesh into the conforming mesh field. And I'll drag the UV mesh into the UV mesh field. Now I'll generate new family and fixture IDs. If you have several fixtures that all belong in one family, you would simply duplicate the data file, keep the family GUID the same, and generate a new fixture ID. This will keep all your fixtures in the same family in automation. Now I'll set the fixture type to grill from the fixture type dropdown. You can click the lock normal to cardinal if you like. This will force fixtures to align to the axis on which they're stamped. The last thing to do here, under the Path tab, I need to change the fixture path to A underscore fixture. If you end up with fixtures you can't place onto a vehicle, you might have missed this step. Okay, let's generate our thumbnails now. To do that, I need to open the fixture thumbnail generator level. You can do this by clicking on the 3D viewport and pressing Control O, or you can just find Open in the File drop-down menu. Once that's done, I'll make sure to select the content folder on the left, and in the search field, I'll type in fixture. This will narrow it down to what I'm looking for, so now I'll open the fixture thumbnail generator level. Looks like I neglected to save the things I was working on, and Unreal is asking me if I want to save them now. I do, and so do you, so let's save them and move on. With the level open, I'll go to the world outliner, and I'll type in A underscore fix. That will eliminate all the extra stuff I don't need, and I can just select the generator. Under the default section here, I need to press this tiny plus button next to the fixture previews to generate. Now if I select data preview file and come over here and press this tiny arrow, it will load my preview file. Now I can simply press the export preview button and my thumbnail is created. Now this mod is ready to export, and if that's all of the information you wanted, you can skip ahead in the video. But I'm going to do a little more work here, and provide a few more examples. I'm going to add a headlight to this mod. You can add all kinds of different fixtures to one mod if you want. It generally makes sense to break mods up into families that make sense, but for the purpose of demonstration, we could pretend this headlight was part of a family of fixtures that were related. Like, maybe you wanted to make a Back to the Future DeLorean pack. You could pack all the fixtures for that into one mod, and that would make sense. But I still don't want a mess, so I'll right-click and I'll add a folder, give it a name, and I'll move all the assets into that folder. Now I'll make a second folder for the headlight. I'll right click, go to the CAMSO selection again, and again I'll select the fixture preview data file. Like before, I have a conforming and UV mesh, so I'll import those like I did with the grill. However, unlike before, I have a rigged mesh to import. 
If I've exported it properly, Unreal should be able to detect that this is a skeletal mesh and the tick box should already be activated. Also, make sure the skeleton field is empty. The rest of the settings should be the same. Import normals and tangents, all assets, and do not create materials. Like before, I'm going to select my conforming mesh and my UV mesh. If I had an additional mesh, I'd select that also and make sure to right click and select set meshes to allow CPU access. You don't have to do this for skinned meshes, however, as there isn't even an option for it. And now I'll go about assigning my materials similarly to how we did with the grill. I'll double click on the preview data file and I'll drag in my conforming and UV meshes as before. The only difference this time is we have a skin mesh to add, so we will drag that in as well. I'll generate IDs, select headlight, and make sure I set the fixture class to A underscore fixture. Now I'll select and save everything. Briefly, let me show you another way to set up some fixtures. Here is my blower mod, and in it you can see I'm using con a conforming mesh, a UV mesh, and the blower itself is an additional mesh. The options for setting up fixtures is mostly up to your imagination. Anyway, like before, let's make our thumbnail, and this mod is done. I have one more mod set up to show you, a rim fixture. I'll go ahead and create a new mod for this one. Again, I don't have to do this, but I want this for its own workshop mod, so I'll make a unique mod file for it. Rims still need blueprints, so I'm going to navigate my way to the example rim folder, and I'll find the blueprint, which is this one here with the blue line, and I'll drag it to my newly created folder. I will select copy from the pop-up context menu. Now I'll rename it. Next, I'll import my rim. Now, we need to import this as a skeletal mesh, even though it's not technically rigged. So I'll tick the skeletal mesh box. The skeleton field should be empty. I want to make sure the preserved smoothing groups box and the import morph targets box are ticked. I'll double check that the normal import method is set to import normals and tangents. The material settings are the same as before, all assets, and do not create materials. Now with that imported, I'll double click on the wheel asset and assign materials. This is a bit different from anything else. There are only two materials you can use for the rims, wheel primary and wheel secondary. You can type in primary in the search field for the first material, then type in secondary for the second material. Now I'll scroll down until I find the Physics tab, and under the Physics Asset dropdown, I'll type RIM into the search field, and I'll select RIM Physics Asset. Use this asset for any and all RIMs you ever make. Now I'll open up the blueprint. I'll drag the RAM asset into the Skeletal Mesh field. Then I'll generate a new GUID. In the top left, I'll press the Compile button. Once it's done, I'll hit Save. Making thumbnails for rims is slightly different. First, I need to go into the World Outliner and type in Wheel. This will find the Wheel Generator. Now I need to simulate. I will navigate to the top of the screen, and in the drop-down next to the Play button, I'll select Simulate. Now, you may have to reselect the Wheel Generator. In the default section, next to Rims to Generate, I'll press the little plus sign and add an array element. Now I'll select the blueprint and then navigate back over and press the little arrow. Now I can generate wheel thumbnails. Now because this rim is stupid, my thumbnail is equally stupid. You can replace thumbnail images with custom images if you like. I'll simply import one I made from a previous test I did. I need to open up the rim preview file also.
Now I can just drag the image into the RIM preview file, save it, and delete the generated thumbnail. Now I'll save the rest of my assets. We can now cook our mod. To do this, we go to the top of the window and select Share Mod, and from the list, select the mod you wish to share. I'll share the grill mod first. Find a convenient place to cook your mod to. Desktop, documents, whatever suits you. Just make sure you create a folder specifically for your mod, as cooking a mod will overwrite any other mods in that folder. Now we let that cook. And cook. Come on. Now I'll share the wheel mod. While that one is cooking, I'm going to get a couple file explorer windows open. The window on the left is the folder where I cooked my mods too. I'm going to open up the grill mod folder, then open the Windows No Editor folder, then the Automation Game folder, and finally the Mods folder. This is our mod. In the right side window, I'll find where the mod goes. This is for the purposes of testing. To publish your mod to the workshop, watch the next video. I'm going to navigate to where I have my Steam Games folder, and I'll open up Steam, then Steam Apps, then Common, then Automation, then UE424, then Automation Game, then Mods. Mods no longer go in the Plugins folder. You should have a Mods shortcut folder like this one. If not, just make a folder and name it Mods with a capital M. Now I can drag my Grill Mod into the Mods folder. Next, I'll back up, find the RIM mod, and drag that into the mods folder as well. Now we can launch automation and see what we have. As of the making of this video, these mods will only work in the open beta branch of the game, and we will want to launch the game using the No Launcher Open Beta option. Once this update moves to the stable branch, which will happen soon, you would choose the No Launcher option. Choose the regular launcher option after you've published your mod and subscribed to it. Now let's check out our mods in-game. I'll start with the headlight. Cool. Let's find our grill. There we go. Here we can see the difference between Cardinal Lock and Unlocked. Let's go find our Ren Herder rim now. There we are, that's great. <laughs> well, that'll do it for this video. I'll tell you how to publish your mod to the Steam Workshop in the next video, but before you go, make sure you give this video a like and hit the subscribe button to get more useful tutorials like this one. See you later.